Hi, in this module, which is module number five, I'm going to focus on subject pronoun agreement. We talked in another module about common errors um, using pronouns, but now I want to stress the importance of having your subject agree with its pronoun in an actual sentence. So again, our focus is on subject pronoun agreement in module number five. And subject pronoun agreement is one of our grammatical mistakes that can be quite costly to some students in their academic formal writing. So it's important for us to pay attention um, on this particular grammatical mistake. First, it's important for us to um, note that a pronoun must agree in number with its antecedent. And if you look in parentheses, I have um, a little extra note for you. If an antecedent is singular in the sentence, the pronoun is singular. If the antecedent is plural in the sentence, the pronoun is also plural. Okay? Just kind of like your subject-verb agreement, if the subject is singular, the verb must also be singular. And if the subject is plural, the verb must also be plural in the sentence. Is the same concept for subject-pronoun agreement. Singular goes with singular, plural goes with plural. I have some examples for you, and this is when um, there's a singular subject that needs a singular pronoun in the sentence, and I also have an example of a plural subject that needs the plural pronoun in the sentence. But let's look at our first example first, which is the singular example. Emma's bar friend downloaded some new music to his MP3 player. Now I'm making reference to Emma's bar friend, so I do need the third person singular pronoun, which is masculine, and that's his. Again, his is making reference to the boyfriend. So singular, subject boyfriend, singular pronoun, um, his. Okay. Now I have my second example where I have a plural noun um, or subject, and I also have a plural pronoun. Some viewers will decide if they will watch the new TV show. Viewers is my plural subject, so I need my plural verb they in reference to my plural subject viewers. So again, plural subject is viewers, they is my plural pronoun that makes reference to those viewers. And again, like with all the other modules that I discussed in this Open Campus course for uh, fundamentals and grammar, it takes practice to really finesse and uh, fine-tune and eliminate, I should say, these grammatical mistakes in your writing. So again, it takes patience and it also takes practice, okay? And the more practice we have, the better our writing in our uh, English composition courses and other courses will be in the academic arena. Now back to our subject pronoun agreement module. There are five rules for pronouns to agree in number. And again, remember, singular goes with singular, plural goes with plural. So our first of those five rules is use a singular pronoun when an antecedent is a singular indefinite pronoun. In another module, I gave you a list of common um, indefinite pronouns that are always singular. So make sure you make reference to the module on common errors um, using pronouns. So I have an example here. Each of the girls told me her name. Each is, a sing is an indefinite pronoun that's always singular, so I need the singular pronoun in reference to those, that girl's name, which is her. And remember, we talked about subjects and verbs and sentences and eliminating prepositional phrases when we're trying to find the subject of the sentence. Some of you might think that girls is the subject of the sentence, but that's not the case because of the girls is a prepositional phrase. It begins with the preposition of and it ends with the noun girls. And remember, anything in a prepositional phrase is never going to be your subject of the sentence. So I'm left with each an indefinite pronoun that's always singular. So in reference to each, I need the singular feminine pronoun her, okay, not plural. Another example I have here with the singular indefinite pronoun as the subject, everyone is responsible for making his or her own bed. Everyone is an indefinite pronoun that's always singular, and I need to have a reference to that, which is his or her. Now everyone is not gender specific, so I do need to have both the masculine singular third person pronoun and the feminine singular third person pronoun in reference to everyone. In this case, it's his or her. 
because again, I don't know if everyone is uh, feminine, I don't know if everyone is masculine, so I have to put both of them as the pronoun reference. Our second rule for subject pronoun agreement is antecedents joined by and usually take plural pronouns. Let's look at my example here. West Germany and East Germany voted to unite their peoples in 1990. Now West Germany and East Germany is my plural um, subject and we talked about compound subjects in, an other, in another module. So West Germany, East Germany, I have two subjects which automatically means I have a plural subject. Now I need my plural third person pronoun in reference to my subject and that's there. T-H-E-I-R. Now my third rule for subject pronoun agreement is collective nouns and I have in parentheses what collective nouns are. Those are nouns that name a group of people or things. Uh, when collective nouns take singular pronouns, if the group is regarded as a unit. Let's look at our example, the first one. The faculty was recognized for its research. Faculty is one unit in this particular sentence. I didn't say the faculty members. I have faculty as one collective group. So I need, if it's one, it's singular. So I need a singular pronoun to make reference to faculty, and in this case, it's its. Then my next example, the couple was expecting its first baby. The couple in this case is one singular unit, so I need the singular third person pronoun its in reference to couple, which is one collective unit. Now my fourth subject pronoun rule is when two or more antecedents are joined by or or nor, the pronouns should agree with a nearer antecedent. For example, now again, this one might be a little bit tricky, but with practice you'll be able to eliminate this, this mistake. Neither the defendant nor the witnesses change their testimony. I have neither nor in the sentence, okay? Now I'm going to go with the one that's closest to the antecedent to figure out which is my subject, if it's going to be defendant or witness. In this case, it's witnesses, which is plural, so I need my third person plural pronoun to make reference to witnesses. And the case for this one is there, T-H-E-I-R. That's the pronoun that I need because I'm referring back to the witnesses, which is plural. More than one, I know it's more than one witness because I have an E-S at the end of that word. Now my next example, neither the teaching assistants nor the professor graded his students' essays. Now to figure out which antecedent or which pronoun reference I need, I need to look at the, the subject that's closest to my pronoun. And in this case, it's professor. Professor is one person, so it's singular. So I do need my singular third person pronoun his to make reference to professor, one person, and not assistants, which is more than one. So again, you go with the one closest um, to the antecedent to figure out if it's plural or singular when you have uh, words that are joined by or and nor. Okay. And then my fifth uh, rule for subject pronoun agreement it is demonstrative pronouns, and those are pronouns that are used as adjectives, and we talked a little bit about that in a different module. And those four of them, this, that, these, and those, must agree in number with the nouns they modify. For example, this kind of tree is common in Hawaii. Kind is the noun that this, the demonstrative pronoun, modifies. I only have one kind, so I know it's singular. There, I don't have an S at the end of the word kind to make it plural. I have just one. So I know it's singular, so I need the singular form of the demonstrative pronoun, which is this. Okay? Then my next example, these types of programs help children. Types is my noun here, um, which is my subject of the sentence, actually. Types is plural. I have more than one type. I have an S at the end of that word, so I do know it's plural. To indicate that I need my plural demonstrative pronoun, I need to use these. Again, these is my plural demonstrative pronoun making reference to types, which is also plural. And not only must a pronoun agree in number with its antecedent, it also must agree in person with its antecedent. And um, person refers to the differences among the person speaking, which are first person pronouns, the person spoken to, which are second person pronouns, and the person or thing spoken about, which is our third person pronoun. 
And I have a list of these for you that will be handy for you when you get to first, second, and third. I have a list of first person pronouns. They begin with I and they end with ours. So make note of that list. I have my second person pronouns. There are only three of them. So it begins with you, ends with yours. And I have my third person pronouns up here for you. Begin. They begin with he and they end with theirs. So again, this is just for you to make mental note of and keep stored in your memory bank so that you're able to identify uh, which pronouns belong in the first person pronouns category, second person pronouns, and third person pronouns. Now, it's important for me to note right now, I know I gave you a list of first, second, and third person pronouns. Now, it's very important for you to realize that when you get into composition courses, whether it's freshman composition one or freshman composition two when you're in college, um, second person pronouns are not what you need to uh, use in your formal academic writing. We try to tell students from day one, eliminate those second person pronouns out of your vocabulary, out of your academic writing when you get to those composition classes. But I want to introduce them to you so you know if you do use them in, in different courses, um, and if you're allowed to use them in your academic writing, you, do, you are able to identify those particular second person pronouns. But don't get in the habit of using second person pronouns in your formal academic writing. So back to our examples of first, second, and third person pronouns. Okay, let's look at our first example. I'm using my first person pronoun. When I entered the room, I could smell the fresh paint. I'm talking about myself. I'm making reference to myself. When I entered the room, I could smell the fresh paint. So I'm using first person pronouns. I'm referring to myself, so I need my first person I. My second example has the second person pronoun as um, in it as the example. And remember, try not to use second person pronouns in your writing, but I do have to introduce it to you because it is a part of the personal pronouns categories. However, again, I have to stress this. I can't stress it enough. Try not to use second person pronouns in your writing unless you're directly quoting someone. Okay, so let's look at our example, number two. When you fly to St. Louis, you can see the arch on the bank of the Mississippi River from miles away. So I'm making reference to my second person pronoun, you. When you fly, you can see this, that, and the other. So you and you, second person pronouns, I'm keeping second person in the first part of the sentence with you, and I have my second person pronoun in the second part of the sentence, again, with the word you. Then my third example is using third person pronouns. Swimmers in the ocean should be very careful because they can get caught in rip currents. Now, swimmers is my subject of the sentence, and it's more than one. I know I have more than one swimmer because I have an S at the end of the word, so it makes it plural. So I need my third person plural pronoun to make reference to swimmers. In this case, it's the word they. So as you can see, it's important to make sure that your subjects agree with the pronouns in the sentence, whether it's going to be in person or in number. And hopefully with a lot of practice and some patience, you'll be able to eliminate um, subject pronoun disagreement in your actual academic formal, formal writing. <music>